You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I only have a certain budget. No problem. Right now at the LASIK Vision Institute, get 20% off LASIK when treated in April. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes, plus guaranteed financing options. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your journey towards 2020 vision. Must mention this promotion to be treated in April of 2024 to qualify. 20% off standard price of wavelength procedure cannot be combined with any other offers. Go to GetLVILASIK.com for details. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I'm so busy right now. We offer a mix of convenient days and times, including 30-minute virtual appointments to fit your schedule. I would love it, but I have astigmatism. We treat thousands of patients with astigmatism every month with great outcomes. The LASIK Vision Institute is making your journey towards 2020 vision all about you. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your LASIK journey. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and ten blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are gonna ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate. I know jiu-jitsu. I drive like a gang. So when I'm coming to see you, see you. Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening. Ready to stand out, Army ROTC prepares you not only as a college student, but as a strong leader, allowing you to earn the rank of second lieutenant. You will be eligible for full tuition, merit-based scholarships, and develop leadership skills essential for your future. Start strong and enhance your college experience. Visit your campus Army ROTC representative today. To find out how you can earn up to a full tuition scholarship, visit GoArmy.com slash podcast to locate your closest ROTC program today. Army officers inspire strength in others. Paid for by the United States Army. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. It's time now for the conservative curmudgeon radio show. Now, here's Grouchy. Welcome in to Wednesday night. I hope you are holdovers from the previous program. Uh, if you're not, uh, you're still welcome, but shame on you. You should be listening from the start. It's Wednesday night. It's KLRN's extravaganza night. 
even though the programming varies, it is always of the very finest caliber and quality. So you just want to be here from the time it kicks off, which is an hour ago. Uh, you know, that means you would have missed Rick, and that's not very smart. And and Stacy, right? Was Stacy on with you? Uh, not tonight. Not tonight. Okay. See, I didn't know that. But um, what I do know is coming up after me tonight, uh, we are premiering a new podcast uh, called Talk Murder to Me. Uh, this will be a true crime, serial killer type um uh, you know, podcast, uh, very, very cool, very, very good subject matter experts, uh, Lara and Aggie. Uh, so you're going to want to stay tuned for that. That is going to be in every other Wednesday for right now. So, um, make your plans for that tonight. And then again, in two weeks, and, uh, you're going to be just fine. You really are. Uh, no Rick and Ordy tonight. Um, Rick said F it, which is fine. He's allowed. He's the boss. Or Ordy said F it. I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Somebody said F it and they F'd it. Ordy's got to work so, tomorrow, yeah. like at 430. So. Yeah, Ordy's got to hit the road early in the morning, like a, like a, um, kind of like a lot lizard, you know, you gotta, gotta work that truck yard. <laughs> <laughs> no, we'll see that that well that's part of the reason why he said no. He's got to hit Circle K first, so which means he's got to be there by like 2:30. There you go. There you go. He's going to be putting more dimples in the dumpster and uh, <laughs> that's from your mom's head hitting it. Doink 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 doink. <laughs> anyway, all right. Enough of that shit. Um I, I guess everybody's uh, still kind of just like uh, doing that quick look over the shoulder back at the college campus protests. Um, they are still ongoing. Um, you know, it's 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 just really pathetic now. Um, just picnics and catering and you, I mean, you know. Just everything you'd expect from a bunch of morons that don't know sh shit about fuck and <laughs> and think they can solve all the world's problems with communism, of course. But uh, anyway, fuck them kids. Uh, there was a language warning, wasn't there? I think there was. If not, this serves as it. Uh, there will be language. and. Uh, you may or may not care for it, and that's fine. So anyway, getting into the uh, program tonight, um, I want to start this um, this first piece. I'm going to, uh, like I did last week, I'm going to give credit to somebody because he actually did a good job writing it, and I've never used one of his pieces before, even though I've known him for quite a while. But this is from Dan McLaughlin. Uh, at National Review, you may know um, Crank, but <laughs> anyway, um, this was his piece, and of course, uh, I'm borrowing most of it and will be interjecting some of my own, but uh, credit where credit is due. Donald Trump, who ducked the debates during the Republican primary, now says that he will debate Joe Biden anytime, anywhere. Biden, who also ducked debates during the Democratic primaries and scrapped the final debate in 2020, now says he is ready to agree to debates. His quote, make my day, pal. I'll even do it twice. Now, for now, the campaign say that they have agreed to an initial debate on June 27th on CNN and a second debate on ABC on September 10th. Now, why Trump is agreeing to go on these hard left stations, I mean, 
I don't know. You got to have a pretty big pair to know that the deck's going to be stacked against you and just say, sure, whatever. Um, but Crank writes, I warned last fall that we shouldn't assume any debates would happen this year and that Trump ducking the Republican debates was forfeiting the high ground that could be used to make it costlier for Biden to back out. He says, I will believe we are having debates when I see them. This race is between two very old men who struggle verbally. We have one candidate whose doctors don't want him walking and one whose lawyers don't want him talking. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's pretty good. I, mean, I, I could picture the old man on the walker scooting across the floor. Probably the only one that hears you too, right? Ah, see, yeah. So everybody thinks I'm talking to my screen. Now I'm talking to Rick. <laughs> anyway, so that said, there is a political risk in appearing afraid to debate. Uh, the recent movement of the two candidates, which has been very slow, uh, toward an agreement to debate suggests that. Both of them realize they need to appear willing to debate the other. Also, the side that thinks it is losing knows that there is more risk in not debating, and Trump's persistent leads in the polls have started to sink in enough to worry Team Biden. But consider the incentives to bail out. Start with the fact that the candidate who's ahead won't want to debate. Right now, that's Trump. By the fall, it could be Biden. In the primaries, it was both of them. Either way, the incentive to debate drops on one side in proportion to how it rises on the other. Uh, sure, neither candidate will want to take the heat for just pulling out, but these are not exactly two candidates who have been unwilling to break norms in the past when they thought it would help them. Uh, Biden has uh, some gall in hitting Trump for ducking primary debates when Biden did the same thing. Yeah, you know, we'll either gleefully use some pretext to claim that the debate system was being rigged against them uh, and their supporters will eat it up. Moreover, both campaigns have uh, so far operated as if firing up their own supporters is the only thing in this election. Uh, even aside from the pre-existing Biden narrative that the president shouldn't dignify his opponents with a platform, there will be no shortage of available pretexts uh, because both sides will be jockeying to control how the debates are staged. Uh, Biden has finally done what Republican campaigns have flirted with for years. He's rejecting the role of the Commission on Presidential Debates. Uh, that means that Everything about the debates, timing, moderators, rules, crowds, third-party access to the stage, uh, will be negotiated directly between the two campaigns. Uh, the Biden campaign's letter to the commission highlights several of the potential sources of disagreement. So, for your consideration, uh, timing. Biden wants one debate in late June and one in early September instead of three debates in October. He complains, uh, ironically, given the Democrats' enthusiasm for early voting, that October debates occur after people have started to vote. Uh, this probably saved John Fetterman in 22 when his catastrophically incoherent debate performance came very late in October. Uh, he has a point, although the better response is to not have people voting three or four weeks before the election. Uh, reducing the number of debates and putting them earlier in the year is a way to make them lower stakes affairs. Uh, in 1980, for example, the single Reagan-Carter debate a week before the election was watched by 80 million people out of the 100 million people who voted. Uh, 
and almost certainly contributed in a big way to a race that pulled closely, turning into a 44-state route. Uh, also, spreading the debates months apart means Biden has a lot of time to prepare and recharge his batteries. God knows he needs that. Uh, as we have seen, when Biden needs to act presidential for a few hours on national TV, he can manage to pull it off, but he needs a lot of downtime before and after that. And if Biden's organizational and fundraising advantages, perhaps combined with a Trump conviction, uh, maybe, we don't know, uh, put Biden ahead in the fall, denying Trump an October debate freezes the race, but in each case the incentives of the Trump camp will be to resist what Biden wants. Uh, moderators. Biden demands that the debates be on a network that hosted one of the 2016 GOP or 2020 Democratic primary debates that limits the roster mostly to venues friendly to Biden, such as CNN and ABC. He also demands that the network moderators be selected by the broadcast host from among their regular personnel. There is no way that Trump is going to agree to the press picking the moderator without the input of the campaigns. And the rules? Biden wants a very strictly moderated debate with no interruptions or crosstalk, strict time limits, and the candidate's microphones muted while the other side is speaking. Uh, this is a wonderful illustration of hypocrisy, Biden's signature move in the 2012 vice presidential debate with Paul Ryan was to shout over the start and end of every Ryan answer. Uh, but now that Biden is a frail old man who loses his train of thought easily, and he's facing a bully rather than a polite and reasonable man, he wants protection against his own tactics. Notably, he doesn't demand that the moderators be barred from interjecting or taking sides. Again, Trump's incentives will be quite different. He prefers a raucous spectacle. And speaking of that, uh, Biden wants a debate without a live audience. Uh, and he does have a point. The audience, or worse yet, town hall questioners, is far more often a distraction than an asset. Uh, he may be worried about a repeat of 2016 when Trump brought Juanita Broderick who accused Bill Clinton of raping her as a prop to a debate with Hillary Clinton, uh, Trump, again, will have the opposite incentive. Now, third-party candidates may be the biggest sticking point. Biden wants a two-candidate debate in order to freeze out Robert Kennedy. Uh, that's probably Biden's main reason for breaking with the Commission on Presidential Debates, which has objective rules for deciding when a third-party candidate qualifies. Uh, that's how Ross Perot got on stage in 92. The issue is not a new one. RFK Jr.'s decision to go third-party was itself premised in good part on Biden's refusal to debate him in the primary. The 1980 campaign is, again, instructive. It was a fight during the Republican primary between Reagan and George H.W. Bush, about Bush demanding a one-on-one -on -one debate and Reagan wanting the whole GOP field on stage, uh, which led to Reagan's famous, I paid for this microphone moment in New Hampshire. Mm. Excuse me, I'm developing some hiccups. Uh, in the fall, Carter refused to debate with John Anderson on stage, so Reagan debated Anderson and Carter in separate events. Uh, Biden and his partisans may talk a good game about how they think RFK Jr. draws as much from Trump as from Biden, and they may even be right, but they have consistently acted as if Kennedy, a lifelong man on the left and creature of the Democratic Party, is a greater threat to Biden because he gives people an option to bail on Biden without pulling the lever for Trump. If the Trump campaign shares that assumption, as it may somewhat appear to, uh, there will likely be a fight over the microphone. Uh, don't get me wrong, don't really care about the Commission on Presidential Debates, uh, which is, after all, just a conduit for the two campaigns and doesn't 
have any real source of its own institutional legitimacy. Uh, but by discarding it, Biden has taken off the gloves in what is likely to be a bare knuckles clash between the campaigns as each grapples for a pretext to blame the other for the debates not happening. So, yeah, I mean, could we see one of the two of them pull out if, if a condition that they want isn't met? Oh, absolutely. Giggity, 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 let's have sex. Um, okay, but not with you. You said, you said pull out, it was required. Oh, I was wondering where it came from. Look at there, Jen made it into the chat. Welcome, Jen. And uh, that is the end of that piece. Um, we're going to press on here. I'm sorry, still dealing with these hiccups. I hate when that happens. I really, really do. Okay, so let's see. Um, here's this is a um, this is a pretty cool story, and I don't know that anybody's really brought this to the forefront yet, but. Um, Democrats have a problem, and that problem is that black voters are trending away from President Biden and the party. Frustrated that Democrats are not addressing kitchen table issues as they grab for extreme matters to woo the far left, according to a broad poll of 39 battleground congressional districts. Uh, this uh, this new survey from Signal conducted in 20 states, Democrats are struggling to maintain their edge with black and women voters, two traditionally reliable Democrat voting blocks. Vice President of Polling Brock McCleary uh, said Wednesday that Democrats are in trouble with black voters as the number of those saying the Democrat Party is more extreme than the Republican Party has increased by 20% just since March. Uh, Biden is similarly in trouble with over a third having an unfavorable view of the president, and it's largely because they're most concerned with the cost of living and not ideological issues like climate change and election integrity that his administration has uh, allegedly chosen to prioritize. Uh, for some black and women voters upset with Biden, the choice is former President Trump. Uh, among key voter groups like college-educated women, married women, and black voters, Trump's approval has also jumped 5%, 5%, and 6%, respectively. Uh, the survey shared uh, is the latest to show trouble spots for Biden as he tries to find topics he can seize on to beat Trump. Uh, he has been in trouble over inflation and flip-flopping moves in the Israel-Hamas war. The new survey showed voters are focused on both, and they also want something done about the open border on the south end of the country. Signal survey of 1,500 likely general election voters revealed one possible reason why voters continue to give Trump a slight edge in the general election um, four years after Biden beat him. Uh, in a word, it's nostalgia. Nostalgia for Trump's first term continues to gain steam. Battleground voters now give Trump positive job approval for his four years in the White House, while disapproval of Biden remains high. For example, when he found the head-to-head -head in the 24, uh, 24 rematch uh, was Trump over Biden 47 to 45, Trump's approval in the eyes of likely voters has increased to 48 percent to Biden's 37 percent a huge gap that would likely signal Biden's defeat in a typical election. Trump's approval has increased by three points since January, despite his legal troubles. 
Uh, the extremism voters see in Biden's anti-Israel policies and push to change Title IX rules to let men compete in women's sports is also hurting him among traditional Democratic groups. Uh, for example, the survey found little support for the most extreme pro-Palestinian protesters who are spouting anti-Semitism, and 61% reject the Title IX changes. Uh, McCleary said that uh, matters are affecting support for the Democrats. You know, it just it just is. It's troubling that a third of Democrats used the word justified to describe their view of the pro-Palestinian protests, while less than half that amount would describe them as offensive. But it's clear those Democrats are ideological outliers when over 80% oppose the protests outright and support the police clearing out their encampments. Pretty strong. Uh, and uh, the, the Title IX, you know, Biden continues to needlessly alienate voters, especially with key groups like parents. Uh, his push for the new Title IX rules is the latest example. Over 60 percent of parents oppose requiring universities to give biological males who identify as female the same rights and protections as biological females. Well, and that makes sense, considering that women outnumber men slightly in this country. So uh, it would it would stand to reason. But uh, anyway, that uh, gets us, wow, pretty close to the bottom of the hour here. Uh, we're at the end of the story there. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a, a nice long break, stretch our legs. I'm going to get something to drink and hopefully get rid of these hiccups. And I'll expect to see you guys back in about four and a half minutes. One, two, what you doing? I've been jumping through some hoops. Want to get my body loose. Want to tell you, tell you what to do. I've been You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I only have a certain budget. No problem. Right now at the LASIK Vision Institute, get 20% off LASIK when treated in April. That can be over $900 off when treating both eyes, plus guaranteed financing options. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your journey towards 2020 vision. Must mention this promotion and be treated in April of 2024 to qualify. 20% off standard price of wavelength procedure cannot be combined with any other offers. Go to GetLVILASIK.com for details. At the LASIK Vision Institute, we know LASIK is a big decision, and every one of our patients is unique. That's why we customize your LASIK journey to you. I'm so busy right now. We offer a mix of convenient days and times, including 30-minute virtual appointments to fit your schedule. I would love it, but I have astigmatism. We treat thousands of patients with astigmatism every month with great outcomes. The LASIK Vision Institute is making your journey towards 2020 vision all about you. So visit GetLVILASIK.com today to start your LASIK journey. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and ten blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandra, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. I know karate. I know jiu-jitsu. I drive like a gay. So when I'm coming to see you, see you, see you.
Hi, everyone. This is JJ, the co-founder of Good Pods. If you haven't heard of it yet, Good Pods is like Goodreads or Instagram, but for podcasts. It's new, it's social, it's different, and it's growing really fast. There are more than 2 million podcasts, and we know that it is impossible to figure out what to listen to. On Good Pods, you follow your friends and podcasters to see what they like. That is the number one way to discover new shows and episodes. You can find Good Pods on the web or download the app. Happy listening. Ready to stand out, Army ROTC prepares you not only as a college student, but as a strong leader, allowing you to earn the rank of second lieutenant. You will be eligible for full tuition, merit-based scholarships, and develop leadership skills essential for your future. Start strong and enhance your college experience. Visit your campus Army ROTC representative today. To find out how you can earn up to a full tuition scholarship, visit GoArmy.com slash podcast to locate your closest ROTC program today. Army officers inspire strength in others. Paid for by the United States Army. Not to be a backseat driver, but can you say for sure you got the best monthly payment possible on your auto loan? Could it be that you might have gotten a better deal by shopping the loan at a few places and have a lower car payment? Next time, before you go car shopping, visit Communication Federal Credit Union first. Our auto loan experts will find you a perfect loan and get you the lowest monthly payment we can. Communication Federal, your auto loan experts. Restriction supply, federally insured by NCUA. The following program contains coarse language and adult themes. Listener discretion is advised. All right, all right, all right. Welcome back. Best damn bumper music in the business. I could just sit and listen to my bumper songs all night. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, top of the hour. Uh, your reminder, brand new podcast, Talk Murder to Me. Uh, Laura and Aggie will be here. Uh, you've heard Laura before. We've had her on as Babe of the Month on Toxic Masculinity. And, uh, of course, you know, Aggie, Aggie is, uh, turning into Ordi at this station. She's going to be on more podcasts than the KLRN logo. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It could happen. Going to have to start putting like banners and tiaras on them. Oh, which Aggie has a closet full of tiaras, but I don't know how Ordy would look in one. Anyway, uh, I digress. And Ordy would rock the fuck out of a tiara, by the way, so. Anyway, so stay tuned. Uh, that's top of the hour. Talk murder to me. True, con true crime, bleh, easy for me to butcher. Uh, true crime, serial killer, all the best shit in the world kind of stuff. Um, but you get the benefit of the in-depth knowledge that they put into these topics as they go bi-weekly. Well, I say bi-weekly, uh, every other week. I don't know. There's a word for it. I think it's still bi-weekly, but I don't, that doesn't sound right. Right. Cause that's supposed to mean twice a week, but anyway, semi-monthly is what you're looking for. Semi-monthly. There we go. I'll take it. But, I mean, it is two hot chicks, so bi-weekly sounds better. Just like, oh, wait. I don't know. Bi-weekly curious? I don't know. I'm sure there will be drinks involved, because, I mean, it is Aggie, after all. Uh, This show, I don't think so. Maybe, ne maybe next one, if she's back, she's actually in Puerto Rico right now, so I don't think she's drinking. Oh, she's drinking Coquito and not telling anybody. I know. I know how it works. All right. Anyway, um, so, yeah, we have this thing in our government um, that really is a garbage function of government. Um, not that their purpose is garbage, but their function is garbage. It's called the Department of Health and Human Services. 
But in true Grouch fashion, I have to give credit where credit is due. They did something right. Today, they suspended all federal funding for the nonprofit research organization EcoHealth Alliance for misleading government agencies about their taxpayer funded research project. Now, what was this project? Well, this project, according to the long term house investigation, uh, involved the origin of SARS COVID 2. The organization came under intense scrutiny during the early days of the COVID-19 pandemic for its coronavirus research projects conducted in Wuhan. Wuhan! Uh, Funded by NIH, National Institutes of Health. Uh, HHH's suspension and debarment official, Henrietta Brisbane, wrote to EcoHealth President Peter Daszak that the immediate suspension of funding for his organization is, quote, necessary to protect the public interest and due to a cause of so serious or compelling nature that it affects EcoHealth's present responsibility. Wow, that's a mouthful. Uh, Republicans on the select subcommittee on the coronavirus pandemic issued a report earlier this month calling for the president of EcoHealth, Peter Daszak, to be stripped of his medical license and criminally investigated for allegedly misleading the federal government. Uh, EcoHealth Alliance and Dr. Peter Daszak should never again receive a single penny from U.S. Taxpayer Subcommittee Chairman Brad Wenstrup. Republican from Oklahoma said, or I'm sorry, Ohio, not Oklahoma. I have a smudge on my glasses. Excuse me. Yes, definitely Ohio. Okay. Uh, Only two weeks after the select subcommittee released an extensive report detailing EcoHealth's wrongdoing and recommending the formal debarment of EcoHealth and its president, HHS has begun efforts to cut off all U.S. funding to this quote-unquote corrupt organization. Uh, The Republican report and HHS documents outline that EcoHealth received NIH funding in 2014 to conduct bat coronavirus research at the Wuhan Institute of Virology with the intention of creating chimeric coronaviruses to better understand natural emergence of viruses with pandemic potential. Holy shit. Are you serious? And we're just funding these idiots to do this stuff. This isn't like you Samrid where there's like, 18,000 pages of regulations that have to be followed in order for somebody to put a uh, smear solution uh, on, on, a, on a slide in a lab. This shit's in China. Wow. Uh, subcommittee evidence published this month found that EcoHealth submitted its five-year report for the National Institute of Allergy and Infectious Diseases Review two years late and violated grant terms by failing to report potentially dangerous research from the WIV to NIAID. And uh, yeah, again, all these acronyms, just write it out. We haven't used... WIV, oh, Wuhan Institute of Virology, okay. Anyway, uh, these actions are wholly abhorrent, indefensible, and must be addressed with swift action, Wenstrup said. EcoHealth's immediate funding suspension and future debarment is not only a victory for the U.S. taxpayer, 
but also for American national security and the safety of citizens worldwide. Um, I mean, yeah, I guess. I, I don't know. You know, are, are they still over there making viruses? I guess it could be a win. What's going to happen to the viruses, though? Are they going to be destroyed? Or are they going to be given to somebody else that's even worse off that we have no control over? Uh, suspension and debarment, which is a long-term prohibition of receiving of federal funds, is a primary public mechanism that protects the federal government from fraud, waste, and abuse by using a number of tools to avoid doing business with non-responsible actors. That would be, um, yeah. Okay. Uh, according to U.S. General Services Administration definition, you know, whatever. Um, I see Aggie in the chat room now. Welcome, Aggie. Good to see you. We're looking forward to uh, your your co-hosting gig coming up top of the hour, 19 minutes from now. Uh, although the suspension is immediate, a debarment period is established after a hearing process and is usually only three years in length, depending on aggravating circumstances. Well, hell, three years late, that's just as late as their report. What's the difference? Let's, let's make it hurt. Um, EcoHealth has been a major recipient of federal funds for global research projects for decades, Last month, the watchdog group White Coat Waste Project, ooh, I need to look them up, uh, found that EcoHealth had been awarded $60 million in taxpayer funding since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. I mean, that's, when you consider how much money the feds have spent on COVID, that's not even a drop in the bucket. That's, that's like a misting that the drop creates when it hits the bucket. I mean, wouldn't you agree? I I think so. Sixty million is is nothing. We're talking about going back what some six years now, seven years. I don't know, some shit like that. Five. I, I, when the hell did we lock down anyway? Was it nineteen? Was it twenty? I don't even remember anymore. I just remember it sucked. It did. It sucked. Okay, so I mean it was twenty. Uh we and and we knew about COVID in nineteen, late nineteen, I guess, in the fall it started, you know. But anyway. It is what it is. And with that, we stick with Congress. We stick with Congress as we move on. Representative Andy Biggs, Republican of Arizona said that the House has enough votes to hold Attorney General Merrick Garland in contempt. He said, yeah, the votes are there probably in both the House Oversight and in the House Judiciary Committee, uh, Big said on Tuesday. He said, then they'll be uh, there on the floor because that's the next step. Earlier this week, House Oversight Chairman James Comer, Republican of Kentucky, announced the makeup of a resolution to hold Garland in contempt for not complying with a subpoena. Garland received subpoenas earlier this year for records, notes, and transcripts regarding special counsel Robert Hur's investigation of President Joe Biden for allegedly mishandling classified information. Uh, no, he didn't allegedly mishandle it. He did mishandle it. It was found in his garage, and it had no authorization to even be in his possession, let alone in his garage. So we know he did wrong. Uh, the House Oversight and Judiciary Committees will consider it a resolution uh, as soon as tomorrow and possibly hold a vote. Uh, it goes to the floor from there, and then, sad but true, 
it will be referred to none other than the Department of Justice uh, for prosecution of the contempt citation, Biggs said. Um, this will be pretty good. I mean, when's the last time we had a uh, an attorney general held in contempt? Was it Holder? I was gonna say I don't think I don't think they got sessions. Um, so I think it was I think it was Holder. Um, yeah, I mean, crazy, crazy, crazy. And, uh, whoo, we're moving way too fast, Rick. We're going to have to kill some time here. Um, because I'm up to the happy ending. Um, <laughs> well, well, yeah, you, you can't peak too early with the happy endings there and they can hear me now, I by mean, the way. You no, know, that's what I'm, that's what I'm saying. We got to, um, Let's uh, got, let's got, let's pick something and, and just kick it for a minute. Um, we got we got we got to pump the brakes. Maybe put some Barry White on something. Come on now, Barry White. <laughs> um, for our next selection, you ladies can throw your panties this way. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're doing it right, they ain't wearing none anyway. I'm just saying. Well, you know, this is not a Luther Vandross concert. <laughs> Oh shit, we're going to hell. Um, but what's new? Um, we'll be saving seats for the whole crew, so it doesn't really matter. I've had my suite upgraded, the air conditioning is installed, and the ice maker is there, so I'm ready. I mean, I have it on good authority, I'll be the one driving the bus, so. There you go. Um. Jury's still out as to whether or not it'll be the short bus, but I'm gonna be driving the bus. Well, you know. If it is, I'll lick a window, what do I care? <laughs> Oh, see, this is why I love working. My God, you know, how many, look, how many nights have I come on here and told you I had, oh, I got 12 pages of notes and And we we never, and we we make it through six. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And today I have 12 pages of notes and we're at the last story, um, some 10 minutes early. Um, that's insane. I mean, come on, G. Everybody, everybody suffers from premature happy ending right once now. in a while. If, if that pair of panties gets thrown at me, we're going to have a problem. Come on, G. Everybody suffers from premature happy ending once in a while. It's okay. Um, I mean, I'm not going to, I'm not going to pop the happy ending prematurely. I'm going to save it. We're just going <laughs> to kill some time here. Um, you know, let's, let's go back. Let's talk about what's going on still with these college protests um, now that graduation ceremonies have occurred, what is it they think they're doing? I, well, I mean, so what What I like is there are certain kids that didn't even get the graduation ceremonies, and these are the same kids that didn't get their high school graduation ceremonies because of COVID, which to me is completely stupid. Um, let's just be honest. Uh, yeah. But and- as far as what they think they're accomplishing now, it depends because most of the places where they're still camped out, are the ones that actually tr- are the schools where they actually tried to negotiate with them, and then they still reneged on all of it anyway. Yeah, there you go. So, I mean, it's just it's crazy that you know we're moving into. I mean, I know a lot of these places are up in the north, and it's not hot yet like it is down here. Um, you know, we by the way already logged our first day in the nineties down here. So done, done. <laughs> yeah, shit's coming. It's it's gonna get real this summer. Um, but it's um, hot even and wet, that and it's great with you when, when you with a woman, but it ain't so great in Alabama. Oh wait, sorry. But yeah, look, I mean, look, Monday, um, Monday, we had storms roll through, um, with eighty mile per hour winds, and it wasn't just a storm; it lasted from nine o'clock in the morning until six o'clock the next morning. It was just one wave after another tornadoes and hail and high winds. And it just pummeled us for almost 24 straight hours. And then the next day you have a high temperature of 78 and the sun comes out. And then, you know, we ease back into the eighties and here it is. It's Wednesday. Tomorrow's Thursday. I get one more pretty day. And then Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I got storms again all weekend. 
Well, uh, since there's tornadoes, can you send a house this way for my ex-wife? Oh, wait. My bad. Um, only if I get to drop it on her. That was kind of my point. I kind of figured, but I wanted to make sure I got the, the satisfaction. I mean, for you, uh, brother, I would buy the house and drop it on her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, see, this is why I love you. <laughs> Uh, anyway, that's, uh, yeah, but yeah, it's just, it's crazy. You know, they, uh, they talk about, oh, it's the hottest year on record. Well, you know, we've only been keeping records for about a hundred years. So, uh, <laughs> that's pretty stupid to say, you know, that we're, we're, ne we've never been hotter than we are right now as a planet. Um, uh, see, and, See, you had to throw the as a planet in. I was going to be like, well, well yeah. you know. Oh, wait. <laughs> right, right. So, but, you know, that, that goes back to these retards um, camped out on these college campuses because they want, you know, climate stuff, too. And that that's just part of their expansion. And here, look, there's a couple of schools, um, most notably uh, University of North Carolina, uh, just got so aggravated with it. They disbanded their entire DEI um little department that they had created and they direct, they redirected the funding to campus security. Oh, like, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. And I read somewhere there was another school that did it too, but UNC was the big one. So, um, you know, that's, you're going to start seeing more of that. Um, they're, because they're realizing the, the goddamn monster they've created. It's, it's like when the professors encircled the kids in locked arms, it was the doctors Frankenstein protecting their monsters. And, you know, these communist bastards, That's this is what they want their, their little students to do. Well, I mean, and then you have... Well, the, the, yeah, the, sorry, I didn't, didn't mean to cut you off, but the scariest part about it is is how much the whole communist ideology has infiltrated our education system. It's everywhere. Oh my God. It is. It's everywhere. Um, look, I got, a, I got a friend that's going through a master's program right now, and uh, they, they were told that they needed to read this certain thing, and then, um, you know, they were going to answer some questions in, in, the, in the online group thing that they have uh, to discuss. And um, this friend sends this this piece and says, "Would you look at this?" And the whole the whole damn thing is is DEI, critical race theory. Uh, you know, it, it just and I'm like, you know what? This is where the damn indoctrination is coming from. Now, I'm not saying it's not happening in public schools in some places, but I can tell you now that shit does not happen here. That that kind of indoctrination and and that kind of teaching uh, that that's not tolerated here. They will fire somebody over that. Matter of fact, they have fired somebody over that because this person refused to take down their rainbow flag in their room. Dismissed. Done. Good. They just, they don't put up with it here. So, yes, does it happen in K-12 schools around the country? Yes, it does. Um, but the colleges is where it's really happening. Because this shit was like, make your fucking eyes and ears bleed as I was looking at it. And anyway, you know, that's just... And that's the shit that is. And this, you know, this friend has to do this shit to finish their master's degree. And I'm like, you know, swallow the pill. You don't have to believe it. <laughs> you know, what can you do? That's the class you got to take. That's the class you got to take. Don't swallow. Just take, don't swallow yeah, it. Spit it. it <laughs> take it and go. Don't swallow right. Don't swallow it, spit it. That's right. Spit it out after you chew on it for a minute. Uh, it is time 
it's time for G's guaranteed happy ending. But more than 50 years after graduating high school, a 72-year-old recently earned his undergraduate degree and turned his tassel. On May 11th, Sam Kaplan became the first of his seven siblings to earn a bachelor's degree after receiving his diploma in cinema and media arts from Georgia Gwinnett College in Lawrenceville, Georgia. Uh, Kaplan's 99-year-old mother cheered on her son from the crowd as he crossed the stage for his graduation ceremony. And look, I had a long-lived Nana. Uh, she was 96. She didn't make it to 99, but... Um, God bless this woman, there to see her son graduate. Uh, she's very excited, Sam said, uh, about his mother. She's excited, happy, and proud. She last saw her son in an academic setting in 1969 when he graduated high school. In the decades after Kaplan crisscrossed careers, according to the college's new release, he ran a cleaning service and later a telemarketing company, he also worked as a taxi driver and in customer service for an electronic wholesale distribution. Kaplan's college also revealed that the septuagenarian decided to enroll in school again for the first time uh, in decades when he was 68 years old. He said, I was riding down the 316 and heard on the radio that Georgia Gwinnett was offering a degree that involved script writing, he explained. My car seemed to have developed automatic steering, and I pulled off on Collins Hill Road. Five minutes later, I was registering for the fall semester. Uh, despite his maturity, he said jumping back into the classroom setting after so many decades wasn't really like riding a bicycle. Uh, the father of five had to learn how to study all over again, and in the early days of becoming a student, felt the jitters of fitting in with his classmates students uh, 50 years his junior. Uh, to make the leap, Kaplan set out to meet a daily quota. Every day he would approach a new student with the intention of learning more about their academic goals and dreams for the future. He said when you ask a student what they want and plan on doing and find out what they want to do with their lives, I think that's uncommon with a lot of kids. They don't get that way with people. Uh, I think I have a good relationship with them, and I got a lot of hugs from them on the last day of classes. Uh, Kate Balsley, wow, Balsley, an associate professor of film at Georgia Gwinnett College, taught Kaplan for some of his classes and expressed her excitement for his academic achievements. Sam was always willing to share photos and stories about his interesting life and his family. We're so proud to see him graduate, but we will miss him. No doubt Kaplan has left a mark on this small college. In a video of the ceremony, the applause from his graduating class swelled uh, as he received his diploma with a proud smile. And if you can't get happy about that, what the hell's your problem, right? That is tonight's guaranteed happy ending. And that is also the show. If you like it, tell your friends. If your friends like it, you need new ones. But they and you are welcome right here with us on KLRN Radio on Wednesday nights. I'm your host, The Grouch. Peace. I hate this place. Nothing works here. The medications don't work. I've been here for seven years. Yeah.